My name's Angelo and welcome to We Want Picks. Every single week we break down full UFC fight cards. We give you our picks, our bets, and our fantasy plays. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our content. And we're also giving away $50. Anybody who goes to wewantpicks.com slash bets, signs up with one of our five betting partners and makes a deposit, will get $50 from us. Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, however you want it. And this is brought to you by earnyou.io. Earnyou.io is the world's first sports and esports prediction game allowing you to earn crypto risk-free. Check it out now at earnyou.io. Next up at UFC 274, we got a couple of heavyweight strikers. There's some grappling in there as well, but big couple of heavyweights. We got Blagoy Ivanov taking on Marcos Rogerio de Lima. Blagoy Ivanov 18 and 4 overall, 2 and 3 in his last five, riding a two fight skid. Marcos Rogerio de Lima, 19 and 7 overall, 3 and 2 in his last five, coming off a great knockout win over Ben Rothwell. Blagoy Ivanov is a heavyweight striker with an iron chin and a willingness to trade. He took the best shots that Derek Lewis, Augusto Sakai, Tai Tuivasa, and Junior Dos Santos could throw at him, and he never went down. He didn't win all those fights. But he didn't go down either. And there's literally YouTube highlight videos dedicated to Bogloy Ivanov's chin. It's it, The whole video is just his chin. It's incredible. And he's a combat sambo guy. He's got a combat sambo background. And he actually beat heavyweight great Fedor Emilienko in combat sambo. He's a talented guy with solid takedown defense, okay power in his hands, and a willingness to survive. I say willingness to survive because... This dude was stabbed. That scar, he was stabbed, and it punctured his lung. He, like, was three-quarters dead, healed up, then got an infection, lost a ton of – like, this guy's been through so freaking much, he just continues to come back. And real quick, if you don't know what Combat Sambo is, it's essentially MMA, but a little watered down. But there's strikes, throws, submissions. It's essentially MMA. Marcos Rogerio de Lima is a powerful striker with a decent ground game and solid leg kicks. For a heavyweight, he has a ton of volume. He put up 160 – six strikes against Maurice Green. And he has decent wrestling offense at 66%, and he averages more than one takedown per fight. The issue for him is that if he gets taken down, he does not fight well off of his back. He's coming off an incredible win over Ben Rothwell, where he looked fast, powerful, and just light years ahead of Ben in the few exchanges they had before the knockout. And it's another interesting fight. Both guys are pretty talented and have paths to victory. DeLima has great hands and incredible speed for a heavyweight. Ivanov has an insane chin and that combo sambat, combat sambo, combo sambat, combat sambo background, which he can use for his takedowns. I, almost just, he, I, I literally almost just threw up because my head just got scrambled. <laughs> you just saying that over combat sambo, sambo, combo. Just, just in an endless. It was just like a lot. It was uh, a lot that I had to process right there. I just started looking into the light. Had to like a instead of one of those stupid now. boomerang videos, it was just a boomerang mispronunciation of a word. It's but anyway, it sounded like um, when you wasn't there the app that people are doing sometimes where you listen to your own voice, but it's like delayed, so you start like talking weird and stuff. That's what it was. No, like. I've the, never the heard that in my is, life. Six of Delima's seven losses are by submission and. Ivanov's not necessarily a submission machine, but I think there's a clear path. He's got six takedowns in his last three fights. So Ivanov's the pick. Rogerio de Lima will absolutely test his chin, but you know, without without being able to put out Ivanov, I just don't see Rogerio de Lima winning. But I know you guys are absolutely obsessed with uh Rogerio de Lima in the uh at least the comments on the Quick Bricks video. So what do you think, Chicky? Uh, uh boy. I'm actually kind of surprised about that because when you when you watch these two guys fight, it really is kind of like a power versus patience type of fight where, where Marcos has the big power and will come blitzing forward with the power. And Evanov will just kind of wait and wait and wait. But when he goes, I kind of mentioned on the uh, previous fight, when he goes, he goes, man. And he will lunge across with those big shots. And, and the issue is you can't you can't put him away. You mentioned the Derek Lewis fight. He's trading bombs with Derek Lewis. Got a couple takedowns in there, but he was trading bombs. He beat Tai Tuivasa. He actually uh, used to train with Francis at uh, Extreme Couture. He also went to uh, AKA and was training with, uh, with DC and stuff. So the guy's been around top talent and faced top talent 
in this division from top to bottom. The top guys now. I mean, Derek Lewis fought for a title. Ty Toy Voss is up there kind of fighting for, uh, getting ready to fight for a title. I'm training with DC, with Francis. So he's been around. So I'm surprised that so many people are so high on Marcus. I understand he's got the power, but against a guy that's shown that the power does not matter, I don't know how Marcos is going to beat Ivanov. I don't I don't think he can outstrike him for three rounds because the takedowns will be there for Ivanov as well when he needs them. I, I think this, I don't want to say it's a tailor-made matchup because with heavyweights, it's always tough to tell, you know, but... I think this is a matchup for Ivanov to, to lose. I think he should dominate this fight. If he wants to get to the ground, I think that's probably his easiest pact of victory. But if he just waits for Marcos to throw those big bombs, his counters will be there, and he's got power in his own right. So when I look at this fight, I and I and I if I were to try to, if I were trying to find a pact of victory for Marcos, I don't know if I can find one. You know. So uh, with that said, yeah. I, I got to pick I got to pick Ivanov in, in this matchup. Yeah, I mean it's his chin. It's his chin. My whole pick is literally based off Ivanov's chin. He's going to take Marcos' best strikes, and maybe he won't, right? Eventually, these things go south, but he's taken And he's only, he's only 35, but you mentioned everything he's been through. The guy looks like he's 50 years old a little bit. <laughs> he's only 35, though. So we're not talking yeah. like before we were talking about chins and you know 43-year-olds and stuff. He's still, I mean, me and that guy are the same age somehow. I don't know. <laughs> look at that guy and look at me and tell me who looks 35. Yeah, no, it's not. He's not aging well. Anyway, I like him at eighty four hundred dollars in DraftKings because I do think he could potentially get a stoppage. I think he can get this to the ground, elbow his way to a win. Because Rogerio Delima, decent on top, but but not much to offer on his back. What do you think of that pricing? Well, uh, DraftKings, you said. Are you on my yeah DraftKings? Uh, I'm gonna. T- I I'll probably take Ivanov honestly in DraftKings. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- no, I think I've put everyone in my lineup, honestly, at this point. Yeah. So somebody's going to have to get kicked out. But I do like the value of 8400 And then Monkey Knife Fight, I, I, it's probably a hmm. – it's definitely more for Rogerio De Lima. Rogerio De Lima has a lot of volume, a lot of volume. It's definitely more for him. I just – the Ivanov over 65, it's, it's probably more for him as well. I think they s- literally slug it out on their feet and then – Blagoy Ivanov takes uh, get some takedowns in there. You'd, you'd flip him. I, I think I, I I I would flip if I was if I was Chris setting up these. I think they should have been flipped because I think this is probably a more or less play because Ivanov will just kind of wait and wait and wait and he does throw in combos a little bit. But, but I think he'll very, get some takedowns. Yeah, yeah, if he gets takedowns, those could add up. But if he, if this is if he just stays on the outside and just waits and and waits for those big shots. It's a less situation, but I, I think volume wise, I think Marcos is a higher volume striker than Ivanov, so I think those numbers should probably be flipped. Sorry, Chris. Uh, you're, you're I know right. you're doing your best, Chris. I, I, I know you're doing your best. <laughs> you're, the line, sh- I mean, I could, you could argue, and honestly, maybe I typed it wrong, but it could be switched. But even then, I still think it's more and more because I think they go at it. I think they just go at it, and I think Ivanov will get some takedowns, and those, you know, those little pitter patters will add up on the takedowns. And Marcos, we know, has solid volume. You want to check that out? We own picks.com slash MKF, and you want to take a stab? Make some bets? Well, I'll give you 50 free bucks. Go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. Sign up, make a deposit, and we send you $50 as a thank you.